Well, here we are again, and uh, it's good to be back with you. I, uh, I'm trying to bring some refreshing ideas to you so that you think in greater mind pictures about what God's all about instead of three-point sermons that really don't necessarily convey images in your imagination uh, and are sometimes more like equations than real concepts. Uh, I, I want to bring to you uh, robust mind pictures that help you understand and learn better. And so I want to tell you about an a incident that happened to me uh, about a week ago. Um, you know, um, some people think that if, 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 you're, if you make money, it's a sin. Or, you know, if you want to have a nice home, uh, you're not being spiritual. This couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, certainly we want to put our spiritual life before our physical life but to neglect your physical life uh, isn't being spiritual uh, I think of an incident where uh, Jesus was talking to uh, Mary and Martha at their home and and they were serving him dinner and over dinner uh, he was explaining many of the mysteries of the kingdom of God to Mary and Martha but Martha was concerned uh, with uh, washing the dishes and cleaning up, whereas Mary was uh, sitting at Jesus' uh, feet or in his presence, and uh, he was explaining spiritual things to her, and Martha started complaining, you know, how come Mary doesn't help me clean the dishes? And uh, Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you trouble yourself with so many things, but Mary has chosen the better part. And some people forget that uh, there came a moment after Jesus was done talking uh, with Mary that uh, it was time to clean the dishes. I mean, they didn't sit in the sink or however they clean dishes in those days uh, uh, and and uh, not be attended to. There is a place where we have to deal with our physical life. There is a time. Now that time should be uh, secondary to our spiritual life or it should be put into a priority. But to not deal with our physical life, to, to let our properties fall apart, to not dress properly, to not take care of our physical hygiene, or, or give proper nutrition to our bodies, is, is, uh, is being unspiritual. It's just, the, it's just not the better part. But we still have to attend to it. So when it comes to uh, managing your checkbook, uh, uh, balancing your budgets, uh, those are the temporal things, but they're really important things. And if you don't attend to them, they'll they'll bring you down. And so when I look at the American dollar and how it's being printed and uh, the wasteful spending going on in the government and the taxation that is attending to these wasteful pork barrel uh, um, uh, items placed into uh, governmental bills, I think, well, I, I have to be responsible and take care of my, my finances in a way that maybe... Uh, most people wouldn't think of. And so when I think of money being printed faster than water runs over the, the dam, I feel like my, I don't make a lot of money, so I want to I want to protect it. I want to put a hedge around it and keep it from deteriorating. Now, the dollar's falling quickly. How do you do that? Well, I think of uh, buying gold and silver or investing in mining stocks, and that's a good idea. And so uh, I've been following a mine, and I'm not going to tell you the name of it because I don't want you to think that I'm I'm – you know, to trying to tout my, my stock so that it goes up by telling a lot of people. I'm not going to do that. But uh, before I invested uh, money in this stock that I'd been following for a while, I decided not to listen to anybody and uh, go see for myself what it was like. So I got on an airplane. I flew to Coeur d'Alene, uh, Idaho, and, and checked into this mine to see if it was just a hole in the ground or whether it was really functional. I didn't know. And this stock is very cheap. And I thought, well, how could it be this cheap if it's if it's real? So I thought, well, I'm, I'm just going to go take a look at it. So uh, I flew over there and took a bus and went on a tour. And lo and behold, uh, it's a very, very well-run business. Uh, they have like several hundred people under the ground uh, mining into the earth, uh, using dynamite, uh, drills, processing plant is right there. And, and uh, I met a lot of the management people, and I went, oh, this, this is the real deal. I, I, I'm really happy about uh, investing in this mining stock. And there's only two mines over there that uh, are actually functional. So, uh, you know, uh, they're going to be profitable. They're going to be good. And why the stock's so low, I, just, I guess it's just because people don't know about it. So I'm going to take the risk and invest in it. But when I got into the mine, and I actually went down almost a mile into the ground, I was struck with, 
wow, uh, how did they find it down here? I mean, this is like almost a mile underneath the earth, and they're digging for, they're digging for silver down here. Isn't that interesting? And they extract uh, 600 ounces of silver a day out of that mine. That's a, like almost two million million and a half to two million ounces a year of silver out of this mine that's been running for 50 years. And I'm going, I, I'm just struck with how deep uh, they have been going to find the real stuff. And um, let that be a mind picture for you on what it takes to really mine God's word for the real gold and silver. You know, in the old days, uh, they, they would... Uh, find uh, a, a gold and silver near the surface. Uh, it wasn't hard when they came out uh, during the gold rush in California in 1848, was it? Or in Oregon, uh, there, there was gold on the ground. You could, you could pick it up. It was in the stream beds. And, and all of those uh, claims that they worked in those days were worked to the point where there was none left, none left on the surface. And, and so in order to find uh, gold or, and silver, these precious metals, you now have to dig down into the earth to find it. And, and the mine I went to was like a mile down. And, and they had it all excavated down there. And, and uh, you have to take elevators down. And there's mine shafts. And it's highly developed. And, and they have it down to a science how they mine for precious metals. Well, when it comes to mining for God's uh, uh, wealth, the wealth of God, uh, it's, you're not going to find it by just opening the Bible and reading. I mean, that's like uh, surface mining <laughs> of the old days. Today, uh, if you want to to really find the rich veins of truth that uh, enlighten your eyes and open your mind up, uh, you're not going to get it by just going to a church service and listening to a, a man that's teaching stuff that's uh, passe now. It, 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 it's just not going to satisfy you, and you're not going to find depth I went to, uh, as I told you before, uh, uh, see a, a man that I had known for many, many years, and uh, we, we did get to ch talk after his uh, meeting, and he, he, he's 90 years old now, and he said, well, the church is just so superficial, and it struck me like, well, maybe it's because we're just teaching them surface mining uh, techniques and understanding of uh, stuff that's been, is 30 years old. It's not, it's not, it's not enriched stuff anymore. To get the real stuff now, you have to dig deep. And most people don't know how to dig deep. They don't have the tools. They don't even know you're supposed to. So they just pick up a Bible and they read translations that are, are watered down. And they, and they just cannot get any nutrients out of church anymore or out of the scriptures. And in order to, to really uh, connect with what God wants to say today, you have to dig deep, which means you need tools and you need, know, you need to have the know-how to do it. And so uh, we're talking about the difference between cliches and, and the, the, the new things that have been hidden deep beneath the surface that we need to get to if we expect to move on and grow and be enlarged and be people of depth. So stay with us as we begin to uh, unfold some of the great, great mysteries that we've never seen before because they've been hidden deep and, and out of sight, not surface mining we're talking about any longer. We're talking about going into the depths of it. So stay with us as we uh, help you see and, and dig and find the real veins of ore, uh, spiritual ore that enriches you.